I titled this one day in the life of a cat herder. Cause that is project management in a nutshell. Um, <laughs> Yes. You've had, see, <laughs> I'm the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Katie is one of the cats, but uh, project management has cats across all departments and the cats also include clients. Um, <laughs> so if you can just imagine that visual of trying to get a bunch of cats um, moving in the same direction, you basically have project management completely nailed. Um, I typically think of myself as 85% methodical and that comes very naturally to me. And that is why project management is a really good fit. Um, I dare say you probably won't find a project manager who is not to a large degree type A. <laughs> uh, we, we have to be, but I would also say that 15% of my personality is more scattered and has a harder time just getting to that full 100% and so that is my constant challenge is, okay, I can remember, I can keep track of these things in my head or on paper that very naturally flows. How do I get to that full 100%? Because if I don't, things suffer. And so most project managers, uh, one thing that I always love asking other PMs is, how do you stay organized? Because everyone has a different method. Um, I've picked up a lot of tools from other project managers of how they get it done, how they get to that full 100%. And so I'm constantly just trying to design for better ways, find better tools. And at the end of the day, uh, writing stuff down in a notebook, old school style, imagine that, uh, works really well. And we also have various tools that we use to keep track of things and make sure that we that we can get to that 100%. Uh, there is a quote that I read, I really should have written down who, who said it, but if you Google it, you'll probably find it. Um, that has always stuck with me and that uh, we all have all these balls up in the air, especially project managers, and uh, we have to keep them up there, but you need to know which ones are glass and which ones are plastic. And that's because, especially when you're in a crunch time, uh, you will drop balls. That is inevitable, especially uh, when you are incredibly busy, which um, in the cybersecurity industry and at Evolve, that is our Q4 time when we have a lot of people who are trying to meet deadlines and they're trying to meet compliance for end of the year. And so they come to us and they need a lot of testing done. And a lot of it is last minute. And of course, we're trying to accommodate. So uh, my goal is knowing that I will probably drop some balls. I want to make sure that the balls that get dropped are plastic ones that I can pick back up. The glass ones, they shatter. And the fallout from that is generally not very good. Katie knows she's been on the receiving end, so. <laughs> I've shattered some glass balls yeah. as well, so. <laughs> yes. It's yes. unfortunately and inevitable, yeah. Yes, it is. And I mean, that's an experience that we all have in regardless of what career is, we've all had the experience, uh, personal or professional life of dropping glass balls. And uh, Katie kind of mentioned this like, it's really important both as a human and particularly in this industry where the tools and the skills are constantly changing to be curious and to say, how could I have done that better so that if I run into this again or something similar, I could do it differently. Um, it doesn't usually pay off to uh, keep beating yourself up over it. And that's where imposter syndrome comes in. Um, and you tell yourself, I can't do this. Well, the reality is, is that we are all telling ourselves that all the time um, and you can do this. So uh, one thing that was a kind of a, a welcome surprise uh, in doing cybersecurity full time is the fact that projects turn over very quickly. Uh, I was very used to the software development world where projects can be months or sometimes years long as you build apps or uh, implement new technologies for clients, but in cybersecurity, our projects are very short because we are doing a very specific pen test or a vulnerability scan, so they turn over quickly. That being said, that means there's a lot of them. Uh, and so we have to slot them in uh, and just make sure that we are doing our 
Tetris correctly. <laughs> and that is something that I really enjoyed because there is usually not a whole lot of back and forth on scope creep uh, where you have a client saying, oh, can we add on this? Oh, can we add on this feature? Because what the test is, is very cut and dried. And uh, that I would say is a definite plus. Um, you have to keep track of a lot more projects, but what they are and what is being done is very, it's very clearly laid out in our methodology. And that's something that I really appreciate as a PM. So some of the highs and lows of being a PM, uh, kind of like I mentioned, uh, we get to use cutting edge technology. I may not be doing the one who is pen testing, but uh, I get to see the tools that Katie and the rest of our team use. And um, one thing that has always been important to me is I like to do work that has tangible results. It can be really hard to work on something and you know you are slowly moving ahead very incrementally, but it's hard to see the progress. And we get to see very automatic results um, quite frequently. That doesn't mean there aren't long haul projects or uh, things that we see over time, which you particularly see in advisory projects where you're trying to help a particular company uh, just have better security posture over time. And that is a fun, a fun revolution to really uh, see pan out. But uh, we get to use all of these cool tools and uh, the best thing is, and I love working with nerds. Um, I want to work with people who are passionate about what they do and love to geek out on it. Um, I think being a PM is probably the best of both worlds because the soft skills are important. Your people skills are really important. I don't have to do the pen testing, but I get to work alongside the pen testers. And that helps me pick up technical knowledge myself. Um, and get better at understanding what they do without actually having to do their job. So <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun to see uh, just the new things that we work with. And um, cybersecurity comes in handy with your personal life as well. Uh, as a pretty funny story, Katie and the rest of our team are familiar with this one because I pulled them in. But uh, I, a few months ago, um, was talking with a guy I met on a dating app and uh, my spidey senses were kind of going off and I brought it here to Katie Bonk and she was like you're right his face is way too symmetrical um this is <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> and she said you know what you should do you should run him through OSINT and I was like should I should I really do that just but something seemed off to me and uh, she was right. And thanks to working with the delivery team, I knew how to use OSINT. Mm -hmm. um, and about two minutes later popped up and this guy was a catfish. And I was able to gather a lot of data on how he had been scamming other women around the world. And of course, uh, when I mentioned this to the team, they were like, do you want us to do more hacking, find his bank account. <laughs> I think we were all ready to rally the troops. Like, yes. let's go, let's catfish the catfish. That's terrible. Exactly. And how many jobs are out there where you have the ability to flip the tables on uh, a bad guy like that? So not, not very many, I would dare say none. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I will say working in cybersecurity has positive benefits for your personal life as well. Um, and that was a hilarious and fun one for me. Um, but on the flip side, some of the lows of working as a project manager, Katie kind of mentioned them. Uh, running into burnout is a real thing, especially after uh, having a major crunch time. Um, one thing I've, I've really learned a hard lesson on that one, and most of the team at Evolve has heard the story from me, but I encountered some very rough burnout uh, about four years ago now. And it took several months to come back from that. Um, and it taught me some lessons about how to uh, set healthier boundaries in the future. Um, but I realized that I was burned out when one morning I reached out of the shower to grab my phone to answer an email at 6 a.m. Uh, I didn't need to do that. 
but that was in my brain. And that was the mode that I was in was just very reactive, respond, respond, respond. And I was slowly fraying because of it. Um, and eventually I did just completely burn out. But um, one of the things that I would probably say haunts me is the fact that uh, knowing that my failures don't exist in a vacuum. Um, you could argue that most people's jobs, your failures impact someone else, but especially when you're a project manager, what you are doing is managing other people's time, their efforts, and uh, not only when you do fail at something or potentially make a large mistake, it impacts not only the client, but it impacts your coworkers. Uh, project management, we interface with so many different teams, which is one of the best things about the job is we work directly uh, at Evolve with Katie's team, the engineers, but also with sales, with operations, with finance. Um, they get to hear from us all day long. And uh, when I make a mistake, it, for the most part, has the potential to impact all those departments. So that's a, that's a pretty high level of responsibility that's required. And kind of in tandem with that is the fact that um, this one is a little bit more personal to me, but in talking to a lot of other project managers, um, just because most people who are project managers, they really enjoy just working with other people. And because we are the ones who are effectively uh, managing the marionettes, we are the puppet masters. Uh, we end up getting a lot of people's frustrations thrown at us, frustrations at how a project is being managed, at how a client is responding, um, perhaps how uh, the contract came to be, the terms of it, and everyone has stuff going on, especially right now in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and so you can get a lot of frustrations thrown at you in the course of a day, and it's very easy for me to absorb those. And so it's important to take time and separate out uh, what has happened, what is real and what is someone else's that they're putting on you or that you just need to say, I hear you and let's work on this together. So um, those I would probably say are some of the challenges and occasionally when they pile up uh, the downsides. <laughs>